And then when it comes out and says he's tangled with an alligator, I'm literally wearing an alligator skin belt from the last gator I killed. Hey everybody, I'm Dalton Ross from EW and I'm here with the four competitors that just appeared on the special preview episode of Snake in the Grass that aired on NBC before the show moves to USA on August 1st. We can watch the entire season play out. And if you did not watch their episode on NBC, this is your official spoiler alert warning because we're about to get into everything that went down. So if you don't want to know, don't watch. <laughs> And with that, we say hello to Yul Kwan, Earl Cole, Jeff Zausch, and Malcolm Freeberg. What's going, gentlemen? What's up, Dalton? Yeah. Hi, Dalton. How's it going, guys? Yeah. Hey, everybody. Hey, guys. They must work together to win $100,000. Being a single parent, the money would make a huge difference in my life. But there's a problem. <laughs> One of them is a snake. Don't listen to them. One of these guys are a snake. So let's just start from the very, very beginning. Yule, wait, when you all first signed on for this show, were you told the complete concept that like, hey, four of you out there and one is the saboteur? What were you told? No, they were they're pretty vague about it. So they didn't give us a title. They, they told me it was a combination of like Survivor and an outdoor escape room and possibly like Mafia. And I was like, oh, that sounds super interesting. So I was in. R rest of you, same thing pretty much? Not at all for me. I was not told <laughs> one thing about this show. They just said, it's going to be a great adventure. What is it like? It's like nothing you've ever done before. That's all I was told. Well, that's not cliche at all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got, at one point during the process, I was told the mole. Like somebody just brought up the mole, and which I had watched back when, how old was I? Like 13, 14 back in the day. And I went back and rewatched Young Anderson Cooper. <laughs> um, before we came out, but no specifics, just vague hints and comparables. Well, at least you knew there was some sort of sabotage element. What about you, Jeff? Uh, all they told me was um, it, it's a social experiment and you can be the winner, <laughs> which, which I like because uh, coming from Naked and Afraid, there's no real like one winner at the end. And it's always driven me crazy that there's no one winner at the end because I'm a competitive person naturally. So uh, when they told me it was a competition, I'm like, I, I'm in. <laughs> when so, they told him he get to wear his clothes, he was like, I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> did, did, did any of you know that it would be the four of you before you arrived out there? Did you know who you were doing this with? I had nope. no clue. No. I didn't even know other survivors were even involved. I thought this was completely different. Like that's how they sold it to me. It's just gonna be a new adventure. You can do something different. And I was actually in Hawaii on a family vacation <laughs> when they actually called me and said, like, okay, are you ready to do the show? Like that's how kind of how it happened for me. <laughs> so yeah, then we're, green we're, as possible. Were so were you sequestered from each other before the game began? When did you finally first see each other? Yeah, yeah we, we were uh, we were locked down in our hotel rooms for what seemed like forever, in addition to the COVID quarantine, because we were filming this during COVID. And so we were locked down because of COVID, and I think we were sequestered from each other. So it was uh, many lonely days in a hotel room where uh, we didn't really know what was going on. So, yeah, so we didn't see each other until right before we got on the helicopter. And then, you know, I saw these guys and immediately, of course, I recognized Earl and Malcolm. And then Jeff, I was like, I know this guy. He looks so familiar, but I couldn't <laughs> quite put my finger on it. And yeah. I eventually realized it was Jeff from Naked and Afraid. I'd seen his seasons. I just didn't recognize him with his clothes on. Was he in a poker <laughs> alliance, Yule? <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw Jeff when we were sequestered, but I didn't know who he was. So I didn't think anything about it. If I would have saw Yule... I would, the the, the uh, gears would start turning like, wait, what, what am I doing? But I saw Jeff, but didn't have a clue. Sorry, Jeff, I had oh. never seen Naked Afraid at that point. <laughs> Interesting, <laughs> man. Great yeah. clue for me. Well, yeah. wait, Jeff, Jeff, I'm kind of fascinated with this because you all then show up a little before you get on the helicopter. You see these three people all like, oh, hey, man, hey, they all know each other. When did you find out, when or how did you find out how they all knew each other? And they're all from Survivor. I didn't even know they were they were the the cast members for the show. I thought they were maybe camera guys or something. You know, that I like, knew each other from Thanks, you know, the previous shoot. Yeah, I had no idea until they started like literally like 
showing us how we put our harnesses on for the for the helicopter and then i realized oh shoot like those those are my you know teammates slash competitors that's right that's right because i remember seeing jeff and i thought you were the host <laughs> that's right I thought you were the host. Yeah, the hat on. He was dressed in all the survivor, the survival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, he must be the host of the show. <laughs> and I saw you. I saw uh, Malcolm looked familiar, but I had never seen his season yet. But then I started to put it all together. Like, okay, I still thought you were the host, even when we were getting on the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. So, 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 Malcolm. Again, spoiler alert to everyone that hasn't watched. Malcolm, when did you find out? that you were the snake? When in this process, when they first came to you, uh, right before you stepped on the helicopter, when did it happen? Um, I was already in, we were in Costa Rica. I was already in the hotel and it was the night before, it was the day before I had 24 hours notice, essentially. Um, they, I just got, uh, the way these things work is the room phone rings, got, you need to, you're gonna come get picked up. I got walked into you know, one of those obscenely large conference rooms. It's never, it never needs to be that big. And then the producers just sat down and. All right. So, and then they explain that you're the snake and they explain how the game works. So that is your one. I, I don't think these guys had any idea about clues or challenges at this point. I was told how it was all going to work and the um, everything. I didn't know necessarily some of the finer points, but I knew there were going to be two challenges. I knew that the clues would. Oh, really? You know, yeah, I knew oh. too. Um, well, I knew it was, we knew it was two days. There was a challenge per day, I think is how it was said to me. Um, I did not know about, a clue being hidden at camp. I was pissed. You got if, if there's a shot of me like after it says, "Hey, there's a clue hidden back at your camp." My face must have just fallen. Um, so I had some knowledge of how this whole thing was going to work out. So that the idea was give me time to prep and like think up ways to screw these three guys over. Were you told the exact what the challenges were, and were you given the exact contents of the clues? I was not given the contents of the clues. Um, I don't want to speak out of turn, but I think sometimes on maybe some of the other episodes that are coming up in the future, some people did get some information. I was not given information. Mm -hmm. right. um, and I was not told the nature of the challenges. I was really, I was praying there was a puzzle involved because I can do a good job and throw a puzzle just right at the end. I was so, I was thinking through everything we've ever done for Survivor because that's my baseline. All the types of challenges that I've seen run. Um, and I just spent the night before, like trying to think through the ways to screw it up in a convincing way. But um, no, I didn't have the specifics. Sorry. As, as we're talking, by the way, we're talking before the episode airs. Uh, I've been looking right. to see the episode. You guys at this point have not even seen the episode. So this might be a little hard, yeah. but, but, <laughs> but, you know, uh, you know, Malcolm, is there anything you did to throw people off your scent that maybe is something that might not have made it to air or something? Any sort of like grand Ooh. schemes you sort of concocted <laughs> when you had these 24 hours before you got in the helicopter? Let them tell the story. They seem to enjoy it. Yes, I had, I did something. Um, yeah. Who you wants guys to take have fun it? with it. Who, Who wants, wants to, to go? It? Oh, I'm happy. I'm mean, happy to take it. Like, so I'll just start off by saying, I think Malcolm played a masterful game. Like, you know, again, he played a really good game. Like, I, and I can, and I was thinking last night, actually, like, because it's like six months, like what happened? And there are like a number of things he did that I thought were really subtle yet really savvy. So, you know, one thing he, uh, if it's okay with you, Malcolm, I'll just rattle them off. Yeah. So one thing uh, on the first challenge, when, you know, we're looking for the snake pieces underwater, he did a really nice job throwing Earl under the bus. So Earl at <laughs> one point had a snake piece, he threw it and lost it in the water. And, you know, Malcolm comes up to me, he's like, yeah, Earl just threw this piece and just kind of lost it. I don't understand why he would do that. And the other thing he did was he said, hey, why don't you come and help me find this piece? I, I don't want to look for it by myself because I don't want anyone to have any suspicion about me. So help me with it. I'm like, oh, that was like really smart. The other thing he did was when we got the second clue, there was a clue around like Ivy on the walls or something in college. And he volunteered that he went to Dartmouth, which is an Ivy League school. And I was thinking, look, if he's not the snake, he didn't have to do that. So that was another way to kind of like subtly build his credibility. Um, another thing he did, when I found the second clue at the camp, uh, I tried to use this as evidence that I'm not the snake because if I was a snake, why wouldn't I have just like hidden the clue? And Malcolm called me. I said, no, no, no. I was right behind you. There's no option for you to hide this thing. I would have caught you. So that kind of blew up my defense. Uh, <laughs> the other thing he did was during the snake pit, everyone was dogpiling on me. And at some point, Malcolm himself said, well, maybe it might be Jeff. And I thought that was really subtle because it made me think, look, if clearly the, the vote's going against me, but if Malcolm is like raising doubt about that, he didn't need to do that. So that was another way 
to kind of like kind of bolster his credibility, which I thought was smart. And then I think the thing that was really, really in the kind of next level is the thing that they didn't show on camera. Before the game even started, Malcolm basically found out he's a snake and he decided he's going to get pissed drunk. He just gets like <laughs> bottles of liquor and just like drinking this down so that the following day, the guy is a wreck. So the first time we see Malcolm, he's like, splotchy and he's like throwing up in front of us and then the kind of producers had to get a medic and do IV and all that <laughs> stuff and it was clear he was not well like his face was like bright red and that was really brilliant because whenever he didn't do well in the challenges no one ever suspected him whereas for me when I actually got sick everyone thought I was faking it so kudos to you Malcolm that uh, was I can, yes I can so interject this now <laughs> <laughs> this shows you how we were all thinking differently for sure Everything you said, that made me more suspicious of Malcolm at the, at the start. He would think one level, I was thinking even more levels to that. Like, sure, I would do that to throw somebody off even more. Like, Malcolm getting sick um, with being drunk made me very suspicious of him from the start. And I was even saying that to Jeff. It's just like, I don't know. Like, that's, that seems kind of weird, you know? So I'll, <laughs> I, I, really? I didn't even understand the level that I was on with you oh, guys. Like, I was going super deep. Couple, I was like, you know, a bottles before, before a competition. Like, who would do that? Yeah, you know? even the Dartmouth thing, you know, all of those things that, you know, Malcolm would do just one level of it. And, and you was like, oh, yeah, he wouldn't be like, no. I was like, oh, I would do that just to throw you off even more. You know, these are all intelligent guys. So, I wouldn't do just one little thing. It would have to be like almost like reverse, reverse psychology. You gotta think at that level. That's how far I was going into this game. Cause this game would drive you crazy like that. You know, where one guy's thinking one way and then you're thinking another way. And amidst all this chaos, you know, Malcolm's just able to just slither through there. Like, oh yeah, you guys fight amongst yourselves. And it's easy to get away with certain things. And we have very limited time. So it was very good and, and Malcolm did a great job. So. And I was very, very happy with our storyline. Even if we didn't win, I was still really happy with it. I was so miserable. If you're if you're watching this, like after seeing it, like just go back and look how I'm in genuine pain for the first 24 hours. I couldn't function. I puke <laughs> like like almost on the helicopter. Like it was, it was real because I couldn't fake it. I'm a terrible actor. Like I can't like actually. But that was. I think I a just lot of smell the I, alcohol. I do work all the pit out of here. But we know, but we all had been drinking. No, I didn't smell it then, but we all had drank something that night. So I didn't think. I had to pay off housekeeping at the hotel to get a bottle yeah. of, and it wasn't fun. I was watching The Mentalist in Spanish and vomiting all night. Like trying to, <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but I think a lot of people would go to the place of like, my thought process, a lot of people would think being sick would be a good strategy to use. They're like, I'm just not feeling well, guys. But like, I just, I don't think a lot of people would have taken it to where I took it, I guess. And yeah, I was kind of banking on you would, and because in these uh, shows, like on these shows, like you were under very tight quarantine, you, they're not, they're like, they're not going to let you have a bunch of alcohol before it starts because they don't want that to happen. So I had to pay off this guy um, to <laughs> go grab it for me. Um, and so it's like, it's so outside the realm of possibility was my logic for it. I'm having to convince myself the night before, like as I'm, you know, kneeling to the porcelain throne that like, oh yeah, this was a good idea. This was a good idea. This is going to pay off. <laughs> good to pay off. I mean, it, it was easy to convince us because he was legitimately sick. I mean, and, and he even fueled, fueled the producers because they almost pulled him out. They were they almost, getting I almost got pulled out. So it was like super convincing. Like there was no reason to think that he was like faking this because he actually was sick. Yeah, so I, I, I genuinely had to like hold the puke in until we got to the helicopter because it's all for nothing unless they see it. And then it scares the producer so bad. They sit me down and they're like, I had my blood pressure, everything. I'm like, oh, I think I took this too far. If I actually get pulled, <laughs> like, this is not going to be good. <laughs> and uh, I mean, I think I, I explained that I was fine and they gave me some like Dramamine or something. But that was, yeah, that was it. I'm really struggling out there. Dude, oh, the baller move would have been to puke man. while you while you were jumping off the helicopter. <laughs> in the that the move. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, we were circling. We were like, yeah, yeah. That was yeah. We were up there for a while because they have to get all the shots. So we're like, can we just get in the water, please? The ice is <laughs> so good right now. Like, let me just cool off. <laughs> I, I, I bet Yule was having Cook Islands flashbacks because I can tell you that opening of oh. Cook Islands from having been out there That's on the rough. boat, it was a vomitorium. I mean, everyone oh, yeah. on every boat. Yeah. 
was that losing sucked. it. Uh, uh, totally sucked. I would not want to recreate that one. You know, when we got into the water after we jumped out the helicopter, it was so nice. We're just like floating around. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, hey, yeah. you guys got to get over here. <laughs> <laughs> they're screaming at us and swim more. faster. All of us are just, we've done this before. We're just going to sit and take a break. Like, yeah. We're just going to. Nice and easy. <laughs> so, so then you, you, will, I, once you're out there, then I assume you didn't have a hotel employee you could pay off to get you some booze. So how did you get <laughs> sick? Because we didn't see that on the show. So what happened to you out there? I just started uh, feeling ill. Like, I, I don't know if it was something that I ate, but I had like stomach issues and I was kind of overheating. Oh. It was like pretty hot and sweaty. So I, I was like that. at one point just not feeling well. But the thing is, the more I didn't feel well, the more the other guys thought I was faking it. <laughs> oh. It made it yeah. so challenging with yeah. you being fragile as he is. He told me fragile. fragile. I, I didn't know that about Will. You're like <laughs> a superhero and cook guy. And I was like, oh, this is, this is Will Quan. I mean, this is you. Well, I'm like a like, delicate flower, man. Yeah, I, I learned that. <laughs> it was so convenient when you got sick. I'm like baby skin. It tears so easily like tissue paper. <laughs> I remember me and Jeff were like, and even Malcolm. I mean, Malcolm was able to play with him. He was like, God, like. Here he is getting sick when this is an important, you know, you know, activity challenge we're about to do, and he's like, he's getting sick now. Like, oh, that was projection. Oh <laughs> gosh. Well, yeah, I, I, just in terms of. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Yule. I, I was just saying, like, you know, I, I think question people like we've been asking ourselves is why? Why didn't we figure it out, right? And I think it's you know again one kudos to Malcolm. Hats off to him. He played a brilliant game. I think just the the time pressure also makes it hard, right? So you don't have as much time yeah. to like engage with each other like i think towards the end i started thinking it might be malcolm because a lot of the clues seem like they might fit him the playing balls and sports sorry right i mean i, I yeah, yeah. right so I, I was you know familiar with with his football background but i, I gotta say you and earl i mean jeff i'll give you a pass on this one but you and earl i'm screaming at the tv <laughs> when they give the clue about the snake having passed the bar because you guys are survivor legends and right there on Malcolm's survivor bio, his occupation is listed as bartender. I told you. Well, Dalton, it's not like we had access to the internet. Yeah, we <laughs> didn't. Yeah. Like, and right. I didn't know anything about Malcolm. And we couldn't talk to each other. They wouldn't let us talk. So I couldn't ask uh, questions to you. I, I, yeah. I actually did think it might, because I remember at one point saying, hey, look, guys, this could be like a bartending exam. And like I, I think I read at some yeah, point thought, that yeah. like Malcolm had done something like she was either a bouncer or a bartender or something like that. But and the hard thing was like the, the second clue so clearly pointed at me, right? It was like bar exam, everyone knew I was a lawyer. So that was hard to overcome. I think the thing that probably tripped us up the most was a third clue. Like I think, um, you know, Bobby Bones basically said, this is the most important clue. Like yeah, this is gonna yeah. be the most, yeah. like best information yeah. you're gonna get. And you the want to see some really bad acting hard. look at my face before that clue comes out. <laughs> like it's, I'm just sitting there like, oh, there like, goes, oh, man there goes six figures. All right, cool. Yeah. This is yeah. But you, you, Jeff sort of inadvertently took all the attention off you with his reaction. Yes. It was Jeff's <laughs> reaction that put on himself. He had a big I was reaction. so pissed. I'm still pissed off. So like <laughs> this was supposed to be the biggest clue in the game. Like we yeah, were led yeah. to believe that if we won this challenge, then we won this game. Like we thought the clue would be the guy's like name, right? Like it was gonna be <laughs> obvious. And then when it comes out and says he's tangled with an alligator, I'm literally wearing an alligator skin belt from the last gator I killed. Like it was <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, Jeff couldn't stop talking about alligators. I mean, he couldn't stop talking, yeah. but he couldn't stop talking about alligators. And so it was like clearly pointed at Jeff and it kind of blew all of our minds. We're like, oh, this is not. And then for me, I kind of thought, look, I knew that I wasn't the snake, even though the second clue pointed at me. So maybe it's the same thing. It's kind of misdirection. Yeah, we but thought we it was had no nothing to connect Malcolm to wrestling alligators. Yeah. So kind of in the absence of that, it just like it was hard to figure out. So yeah. Yeah. that that's yeah. the thing. You you look at him now, and it's sort of an after the fact, clearly. And we'll see if this continues in the series or not. As other people, and they're having to watch in real time, and they haven't had the you know the other people playing Snake in the Grass have not watched your episode. Like if if I was a, an episode in episode seven of it, and I just watched you guys in this NBC preview, I would know. All right, it's not going to be the obvious. It's a misdirection. You, whoever, almost whoever it's so obvious to, you can almost eliminate that person. Yeah, right. I, I mean, so you get it because you we've known each other for a long time, so you knew the football thing right. right away, and then the like the bartending thing. But if you don't, if you've never watched Survivor before, you wouldn't know these things. So like, I can't imagine, like, especially in Jeff's case here, like having, being able to pin that on me, but that, like you'll said, I was kind of volunteering 
some information than trying to because I knew they were on they they weren't on to Yule, they were wrongly on to Yule. I was just pinning everything I could on Yule the entire time. <laughs> so so let, hey, Yule was helping you out too. <laughs> well, well, let's go there then, Yule, because we see this a lot in the show. How yeah. frustrating was it? You know you're not the snake. They're all saying you're the snake. How frustrating was it trying to convince everyone that you were not? Oh, super frustrating, super frustrating. I'm like, I don't know what I could do to like convince you guys. But, you know, again, I, I think, you know, again, hats off to Malcolm. He played a brilliant game. And I, my intuition is that if we had just one more day, one I think hour. we might have been able to piece it together. Because I think, you know, I think, um, you know, I my hope was to be able to talk with like Earl and Jeff, like privately. I didn't want to talk in front of Malcolm because he seemed like the only person who wasn't dead set on like targeting me as a snake. So I didn't want to kind of blow that up. But I think we might have been able to kind of piece things together. Because again, I knew in my case, I wasn't a snake, even though the second clue pointed squarely at me. I think I would have told Jeff, like, Jeff, this third clue is pointing squarely at you. But I know that from the second clue, it's not me. And if it's not you, it's got to be Earl or Malcolm. And then, you know, I think we might have been able to piece it together because the other clues actually did fit Malcolm. But again, I think that's why this game is hard, right? You have 36 hours. And I, I think they did a nice job striking the right balance, where if it's too long, you could probably figure it out. If it's too short, you have no chance. And here it's like right on that nice edge. Yeah, I was, I'll agree with that. I was holding on to a first quarter lead, like after, because, and I don't know if it's in the episode, Jeff said something early on that he believes me, like out loud. Like, I don't know if that's in the episode, but yeah. Jeff expresses it. So, all right, I got Jeff. Yeah. Um, but it, like they said, one more day, but one more hour even, like it might've been over with because I don't know, you don't, we didn't get to talk after that last clue came out until we got to the snake pit, which what, I, I start smiling the minute the clue comes out because I know exactly how to play this. I'm smiling even bigger when they put us on lockdown or what do they say? Hard ice, <laughs> yeah, hard, hard ice, hard ice. Hard <laughs> ice. No talk, which is no talking in reality mm -hmm. competition lingo. Yeah. They immediately shut it down after whatever you see Jeff's reaction on the beach. And so there was no time for y'all to like really piece that together. So yes, I, they were, they would have had it sooner rather than later. And, and just to clarify for anyone watching uh, this is that, you know, they want to make sure any interactions between these people, yeah. they capture on camera. They have to have it on camera so you guys see. So that's what they is when they are not filming, they can't talk. Yeah. Um, so Earl, yeah. my man, you're an athletic dude. So what was <laughs> up with that throw of the snake piece that <laughs> didn't really, quite make it to can shore? I really say, can I actually really say what it was? I mean, it didn't look good, dude. I think you can. I know what you're going to say. I think you can. Yeah. Yeah, I could have thrown that thing on top of the mountain. Like, for sure. <laughs> like, it was a very obscure shaped thing, and I didn't trust anybody but myself at that point. And so I took it from Malcolm. And, and what we do on Survivor, we, you know, a lot. It was a countdown. So we usually, you know, when you're in the water swimming and doing things, you throw your stuff onto the beach, right? Because so you can all you know, put it all together. Because we had to put this this puzzle together. So when I had it, all of the cameramen was literally like. <laughs> right sitting there on the edge bobby bones are like so i i had nowhere to throw it so i had like maybe eight feet of sand that i have i was very in so i'm throwing this thing like at a target and right. it hits like right there i'm like okay i made it and then here comes the waves <laughs> walks <laughs> it away now naturally i would have thrown it 100 feet but i could i didn't want to hit anybody so that's really what happened but it played you know perfectly to the storyline because it made it seem like i'm going to do it on purpose but I think I even told you, I was like, yo, I'm not stupid like that. Like, why would I even yeah. do anything that obvious? That didn't even make any sense. Uh, it was, and I even looked for it. And with that challenge, it was so hard at first when the waves were going. We didn't find it. I was surprised Malcolm even found that one. I found a second one. I don't know if it's yeah. in there. I was like burying it uh, underwater, <laughs> trying to, before Earl handed me the you know a golden egg right there yeah yeah that totally helped you yeah. this worked out if that would have never happened i wonder how it all would have even played out yeah it would have been different because and yeah that would have been but it played into the sick thing too because i could claim i need to do this because i'm so tired and worn out so i got to yeah. hang out in the shallows like with the excuse that uh i told these guys it was bad shellfish but it was 40 proof yeah uh, <laughs> but like i got to um i i was the one doing all the searching for it for the most part because I was too sick to go diving when reality, I found a second one in genuinely the first five minutes. Uh, but the tide out there was rough. I'm wondering oh, if they tested was... that challenge 
in like much calmer waters because it was yeah. rough out there. That would have been tough no matter what. Yeah, I didn't find a single one, and I was really trying. I was trying my best, but yeah. I could not find. We were it. trying our very best, and it was the tide just kept kept moving. It was it was murky. I wasn't. Time. <laughs> and, and Malcolm just got lucky he found that first one and it helped and then you know that throw and everybody I mean it was like a hundred cameramen right there like okay can I just throw it straight there and hit somebody or it was just, yeah. just a bad Malcolm you thought you might have actually stepped on the real snake bit I, I, right? I mean every time I because it was it was very rocky I would hit something with my foot if it was very clear that it wasn't in that shape like that curve it was essentially rebar yeah. Um, if I could tell it wasn't that, I would pick it up to show you guys that I found something and I put it back. But anytime I kicked something that was hard and long, I was just driving it down into the sand, like with my foot. So I don't, I can't confirm a hundred percent that I found it, but I was, there are a lot of, um, hard things on that beach that are deeper in the sand today than they were when I got there. <laughs> yeah. Mothering everything. That, that first challenge for me was what really threw me off. So, right. you know, Malcolm, he, he found the first piece of the snake. Right. And Malcolm, didn't you also find one of the metal detectors? Yeah, that was. The yeah. Strategy. You and, come out fast. And right. It. You came out fast. And I'm like, wow, the guy's sick and he's still like delivering, you know, and then you'll, you know, didn't find any pieces, didn't find any metal detector. So, you know, and 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 so that immediately got my suspicion on Yule, which then just grew from there. So I feel like yeah. the first challenge really kind of, um, you know, got Malcolm as big lead. First quarter yes. lead, yeah. So yeah, yeah. you and got the lead. Earl. Uh, yeah. yeah, so then you know, Earl, whatever the piece washes away. Yule, you had the lawyer clue, and he's sick, and everyone's looking at him. Jeff then gets the alligator thing happening. So Malcolm, as you get to the snake pit, as you walk into there, how confident were you that you had the hundred thousand dollars locked up? Uh, I would say let's call it sixty six percent, like two thirds confident. Though I'm waiting for Earl to speak. Genuinely, when I'm sitting down there, I want to see if Earl's changed his mind because, like, a few things happen to and Jeff. I, we, Jeff and I had a conversation the, mor the second morning where I almost blew it. I just walked away from the conversation because I was handling uh, our snake discussion so badly. So I know it's my grip is slipping. I would say about 66%. And then Earl does this really long, dramatic pause before he, like, Bobby <laughs> asks him who the snake is. And Earl goes, Oh, he's being all dramatic. He's been hanging out with Jeff for too long. He's being all dramatic. <laughs> so he's, oh, and I'm waiting there. And I don't know if you got, I remember when Earl said Yule, I'm like, okay, I think I've got, I'm at 90 now. And then when I, I had that play in my head, when I talked to Yule on the side about uh, throwing it to Jeff. And when Yule went for that, then I was pretty sure I had it. Yeah. So about two thirds of the way through the actual snake pit proceedings, um, which was like an hour, it was like a tribal council, like an hour long. Um, I was pretty sure I had it. Yeah, well, it was 50-50 at that point for, for me. Yes, yeah, so but once you said it, and then it's like, okay, I just need to get Yule not to try to turn on me for another 20 minutes, and then, then yeah, I had it. Yeah. And it was a brilliant move on his part, because, so I, I figured out after the third challenge, it probably wasn't Jeff, because there was one part when we got to the boy and looking for the key, we could not find the key. I mean, it would, that, that challenge would have been over. And Jeff yeah. was out of desperation. Let's just tip the boy over. Let's just yeah. pull it over. So he pulls it over and that's what brought the key up. And I was thinking, look, if Jeff is a snake, he could have just let us been flailing. He did had no reason to uh, pull that boy over. So I was pretty sure it wasn't Jeff, but then the third clue pointed so squarely at him that we were just kind of blew up on his mind. But even then I was thinking like, look, I don't think it's Jeff. And I think this is another misdirection thing. You know, so I, at that point, I didn't think it was him, but then, you know, in the snake pit, um, you know, I was thinking about trying to get people to go maybe after uh, Malcolm, but then Malcolm did again, a really brilliant subtle move where he proactively says, hey, Yul, maybe it's Jeff, maybe we should try to switch it. And I'm like, look, Malcolm had no reason to do that. If everyone's dogpiling on me, he could have just let the game flow in this direction and he would have won. Um, so I thought that was actually a really, really good move on his part. So again, kudos to you, Mom. Wow. Just, just I, so I, didn't think, yeah, I didn't think Jeff was a mistake. You, I, I tell you what happened. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened at the end. I think I already explained it to you. 50-50. Jeff, remember when I told you, I said, I think it's Malcolm. I said, I, I really yeah. think it's Malcolm. I told him, I said, like, I think it's Malcolm. And I was going in there. I think it's might be Malcolm. So I'm gonna give you a- But you're not supposed ass. to be doing hard ice, Earl. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I said, I'm gonna give you a one last chance to prove that he is not the snake. And then I said what I said, and you, 
you went around me like you couldn't face me or something. And I was like, that looks so guilty again. Yeah. And it yeah. was so the girl wanted me to look him in the eye and just say, I am not. I said, just tell me. Right. And you still did not look me in the eye. I was like, oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what did it for me. I thought it was a lost cause. But, well, it's you know. so interesting. You, I mean, the, the Earl Yule relationship is fascinating. You guys, one survivor back to back yep. years wow. ago, maybe talked about, maybe we'll be out there on the island again someday. You end up out in the jungle together on this different show. And then it it doesn't seem to go so rosy between you two in the game. You know, you're kind of pointing fingers at each other. It's interesting. Yeah. It's interesting to watch that go down. Yeah, kind of. In some ways, I felt like the fact that we actually knew each other and were friends kind of worked against us, right? Because it's like, you just kind of expected or assumed. I, certainly, just for my part, I assumed there'd be a level of kind of trust. And so when I realized he really thought I was a snake, I was like, oh. And then because of the first challenge, I immediately suspected him. And I thought he'd be the perfect snake. Like, Earl is such a stand up guy, right? He's yeah, like, oh, he's I thought about perfect. you. I thought yeah, I he'd be like, was cool. I didn't want him to be the snake. Malcolm, I don't know. That dude's kind of sketchy. And Jeff, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Earl would be like, such an incredible snake. And I'm like, oh, maybe it is him. Well, yeah. you, you said one thing I remember in particular. You said, like, you know, I think it would be great to play the snake. I'm not the snake, but it sure would be great to play it. I remember it's something. Like, Why would yeah. you say that? Because like, <laughs> I meant that. I'll tell the truth. <laughs> yeah, it's like, but you're just being, you know, nice, you know, honest you. But I'm thinking like, oh. ah, he's up to something. Right. Well, it, it it was tons of fun to watch. Uh, I know you all got to run. We could do this for many more hours. In fact, I think we will. We'll have to go to a a bar with the former bartender. I guess drinks are on him. He won the hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> All drinks are on Malcolm for forever now. God, what yeah. part of again, this conversation makes Malcolm, you think you... I ever want to drink again? Like <laughs> I, genuinely. I know you too well, Malcolm. I know you too well. To know the yeah, I question. forgot. Yeah, it's been, yeah. yeah. <laughs> guys, it was, it was an a honor to play with these guys. It really was an honor. Everybody's yeah, you know, it was a ton of fun. Guys. We had a good time out there too. Love Malcolm, yeah. Jeff, you all. The, yeah, it was great. It was so here. It was fun. Yeah. Uh, thanks for doing this, guys. It was an absolute blast.